Hello guys, so this video is on the anatomy of the leg. So as um, customer, we will start to describe um, the cutaneous innervation of the leg first. And if you look at the anterior surface, the leg, medially you'd expect the saphenous nerve to supply. The skin is going to be a branch of the femoral nerve. Then you have the lateral sort of cutaneous nerve on the lateral aspect. You have a superficial fibular nerve. Just this one, which is your superficial perineal nerve. Right. And if you look at the back, there is the pseudo communicating nerve on the lateral aspect, as well as the pseudo nerve. Then you have branches of the saphenous nerve on the medial aspect. Right. This is just the small saphenous vein, which is one of the superficial veins you see in the leg. You have the small saphenous vein on the lateral aspect. Then you also have the great saphenous vein on the medial aspect. Then if you come to the muscles, right, the anterior compartment of the leg, remember we said in the lower limb, we're going to be having muscles on the anterior aspect being extensors or your dorsiflexors, the ankle joint. This is going to be the tibialis anterior. The tibialis anterior muscle originates from the shaft of the tibia as well as the interosseous membrane that exists between the tibia and the fibula. However, if you look at the tibialis posterior, which is the a muscle of the posterior compartment, which is going to be one of the plantar flexors, it originates from both the tibia and the fibula, as well as the intervening interosseous membrane between these two bones. Right, And the muscle of the anterior compartment will be innervated by the deep peroneal nerve which is one of the terminal branches of the common peroneal nerve. Of course, the other more superficial branch, which is the superficial peroneal nerve, will be the nerve of the lateral compartment, right? Then, so this is your tibialis anterior, right? Then you'd expect to see the extensor digitorum longus, just this one, right? Extensor digitorum meaning um, it's going to the digits. It actually originates from the anterior surface of the fibula and it goes to insert onto the extensor expansions, right? Then you have peroneus tertius, you have um, extensor halus longus, then you also expect to see the extensor digitorum brevis, right? But these muscles, yes, they're coming from the fibula and in terms of insertion, peroneus tertius inserts, um, is the same insertion as, um, the peroneus brevis, which is the mass of the lateral compartment, that will actually be going to the, the base of the fifth metatarsal. Then if you look at um, your extensor digitorum, it's going to the extensor expansion, as so I've already alluded to, extensor halusis, it's going to the hallux, right? All these muscles, they're innervated by your deep peroneal nerve. Then going a bit inferior or distal, these are going to be your extensor retinaculum. You have a superior extensor retinaculum and a Y-shaped inferior extensor retinaculum. Here's a trick. These muscles are arranged in a particular way. The muscles and the nerves from medial going lateral. Right. So the mnemonic to remember that is from medial going lateral, the Himalayas are not dry plateaus. So the Himalayas, they refer to the tibialis anterior tendon. Himalayas, extensor halusis, longus tendon, are not as the artery, your dorsalis pedis artery, which is a continuation of the anterior tibial artery, which is the artery of the anterior compartment. The nerve is the deep peroneal nerve, the knot. And not dry, you then see the extensor digitorum longus tendon. Plateaus, you then have the peroneus tertius muscle, which is this one, which we say it has the same insertion as your uh, peroneus brevis. And you're going to find that you can have what is known as an anterior compartment syndrome, just like how you also had an anterior compartment syndrome in your forearm. And in that anterior compartment syndrome, it can actually compress those vessels, particularly the anterior tibial artery, in such a way that you actually lose the pulse at the ankle joint, right? These are the muscles that we were describing, extensor digitorum longus. This is your tibialis anterior muscle. 
these muscles will also become important when we look at the support of the axe of the foot. This extends the hallux as long as. Then if you go to the lateral compartment of the leg or your peroneal compartment, the peroneal compartment will have two muscles. I hadn't mentioned the insertion of the tibialis anterior yet because if you look at the peroneus longus muscle, it has the same insertion as the tibialis anterior muscle. They insert into the base of the first metatarsal and the medial cuneiform. Peroneus or fibularis longus, peroneus or fibularis brevis, they are originating from the fibula. Peroneus brevis, same insertion with peroneus tertius. It's going to the base of the fifth metatarsal. They are all innervated by the superficial peroneal nerve. Function, they evade the foot. Right. But something that I also want you to know before we talk about the joints, evasion and invasion do not okay at the ankle joint. At the ankle joint, you only have plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. That is true flexion and extension, respectively. Right. Those who actually, the evasion being done by your uh, perineous muscles will be at the subtalar joints, um, as well as the transverse tarsal joints, right? And these perineal muscles, they will also support the lateral longitudinal arc of the foot, and they assist in plantar flexion, right? Then, if you then go a bit posterior, you're going to see the muscles that are actually going to be in the posterior compartment. And the posterior compartment, we can divide it into a superficial group and a deep group. If you see this muscle here, this is the gastrocnemius. The gastrocnemius will have a lateral head and a medial head that will come and in, join into the stendocalcaneus together with the one that is directly beneath soleus, right? This is the soleus, they'll form this tendocalcaneus, which goes to insert onto the calcaneum, tendocalcaneus, meaning it's going to the calcaneum. They are both innervated by the uh, tibial nerve, together with another short muscle known as the plantaris muscle, which also goes to insert onto this calcaneum. Right. These muscles, they form the muscles of the calf. Right. And they assist in the plantar flexion because they're going to plantar flex. And if you look at the gastrocnemius, it's going to cross the knee joint as well. So will the, the, the soleus muscle. So you'd find that those muscles will also uh, flex um, the knee joint. Right. Then the soleus muscle will originate from the shaft of the tibia and the fibula. If you remember the anatomy of the tibia, it was going to have a soleal line in which you can have the popliteous muscle in sitting above was the soleus muscle originated from the soleal line itself and they're joining part of the bone going inferior. Then the plantaris will originate uh, from the lateral supraquendular ridge of the femur. Right. Then the posterior compartment deep muscles, you're going to see the popliteous muscle, just this one. So this is your plantaris, it's actually part of the superficial compartment. Right. Then this popliteus, it originates from um, the lateral surface of the lateral uh, condyle of the femur, and it goes to insert just above the soleal line of the tibia. Right. So this muscle flex the knee joint, right, and also helps in unlocking the knee when you are when you are walking. Right. Then. You're going to have, um, if you look on the diagram on the, on the right, you're going to have the flexor digitorum longus, tibialis posterior, and flexor halus as longus. If you remember, we said the tibialis posterior muscle will originate from both the shaft of the tibia and the femur, and the fibula rather, and the intervening interosseous membrane in between them. And it's going to mainly insert into the navicular bone and all the other small tarsal bones except the talus, because the talus is the one that is no muscle attachments, right? And this is the flexor, allus as long as, 
alus is meaning it's going to the alex. Then you have flexor digitorum longus. Longus meaning there's going to be a brevis when we look at the short mass um, of the small muscles of rather that are in the four layers of the foot. Right. Flex alus is long as originates from the posterior surface um, of the fibula, whilst the, the digitorum will actually come from the tibia. Right. And if you look at the arrangement towards the flexor retinaculum, it's now that doctors are not hunters. The from medial, you're going to see the tendon of the tibialis posterior, which is this one. The doctors are not. So you then see digitorum. Doctors are not artery and nerve. The artery will be the posterior tibial artery before it divides into medial and lateral plantar arteries. Nerve will be the tibial nerve before it divides into medial and lateral plantar nerves. Um, the H would then be the flexor hallucis longus. So there has been an inverse um, switch between the hallucis and the digitorum in reference to what we saw on the anterior compartment. Of, um, of the leg, right? Then if you notice here, this is the flexor digitorum longus. Notice how it's crossing this tendon, of the flexor hallucis. It's going to cross it and receive a strong slip. That is going to become important when you look at the anatomy of the foot. And um, medically, you'd find that there's what is known as DVT, your deep vein thrombosis. Due to immobile or immobility, we may find uh, stasis occurring in the lower limb and it's going to pull the blood in those regions. And that is, that is going to actually be problematic in people who are actually um, carrying chronic sickness. Right. So that's just about it in terms of the anatomy of the leg.